to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. The basket I've chosen to work on today is our laundry basket, and the material and cut pattern is as follows. From 7 8 inch flat, cut 10 pieces 36 inches long and 10 pieces 40 inches long. You'll also need 5 8 inch flat oval, and from that, cut 10 pieces exactly 11 inches long. You will also need number three round, number two round, and number eight round. From, make sure you number eight round, you need a piece at least six feet long. You'll need half inch flat, quarter inch flat, five eighths inch flat oval, and dyed reed can be an option for you. You can also put in some seagrass like I've put in this one here. This basket has a lot of material in it, a lot of different sizes. I already have my pieces cut here. You're going to take your long pieces, these are 40 inches, mark your centers on the wrong side and lay them underneath your spoke weight. The wrong side is going to be facing up and you're going to line up all your centers. We have seven pieces. Then we're going to go in. First, let's line up our centers here. This is a large basket. It's going to take a large table to work on. Perhaps your kitchen table would be a good spot. And here's my other pieces. On this one, on your first piece, I want you to mark your center as usual, and then mark 11 inches across here. Give yourself a half inch marking here and here. We'll need this in a little bit. Weave this one under your center marks on your 40 inch pieces. Line up your center. Here's my center here. Go ahead and put in the top one. This one is going to go above your center lines. Over and under, just a basic basket weave pattern, also called plaiting. Now I'm going to line my outside spokes up on my lines here, my farthest lines. I'm going to come in here and get those pieces, my flat ovals that I've cut, 11 inches, and weave this one under, the flat side facing the reed, line up my marks here, and let's weave another one up here, right on top of the piece that we've already woven in. And again, we're going to line them up. Come in here, now this is a, a one inch spacer, one inch piece of reed. I'm going to draw these paste pieces up and space them. Come over here and kind of eyeball these 40 inch pieces going this way. I do a lot of eyeballing. Okay, now again we're going to come in here and weave it the opposite. Pull up our centers. Put in our flat piece. Now this flat oval piece gives the bottom strength. That's why we're adding them here. You're going to need strength on a laundry basket. Again, do your spacing. Over and under. Line up your centers. Do some spacing and put your flat oval piece on. Watch your ends here that they don't start coming in this way. Let's come up here and match up this. Again, the wrong side is facing up. And weave in our flat oval piece on top of the piece we just wove in. You need to do this one right after the other because it's too difficult to go back in and weave these flat oval pieces in. And then watch our spacing here. Take off my spoke weight. I don't need it anymore. Leave another piece up here. And again, line everything up. Watch your spacing. Watch my ends here so that they're all even on both sides. centers, spacing again, 
you won't have to work nearly as fast as I do, so take your time and do a good job. The staining that I showed you on the, that was on the basket that opened the show is a mahogany, which gives it a red tone. And I'd like to give you a pattern for that, too, or a mixture pattern. Space, line these up. I've talked before about how you have to be careful when you use stains on your basket not to use a stain that says seal. If you have a stain that says seal and happens to be a color that you like and you would like to use it, then what you need to add to it for a cup of stain, you're going to add a half a cup of turp and two tablespoons linseed oil. And that linseed oil is going to help to keep your basket soft. What happens is the basket uh, becomes very brittle when you use a, a stain that has a sealer in it. Okay, I think we're all lined up. Take your clothespins and you're going to clamp out your four corners. And that's to keep your spacing all the same. We've already done the spacing. We don't want to lose it. Kind of look it over. Now you're going to come in here and get your number three round, taking your long lengths off center. I want two different end lengths. And I want to crimp up here so it'll turn without breaking, which is just to squeeze with your pliers. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start, I like to keep away from my corners, I'm going to loop this piece over my spoke and I have to push these down as I work. See how I have to push this down because it's going up over that flat oval. So I need to push it down and pull this tight in here. Now we have a corner again. On this one I'm going to bring the one from behind first and then come around with my left one. We have corners that are done two different ways. I have a long piece that's going to tangle. We need to untangle it. Come up here. Keep these rows packed in tight. I want to do. And we're going to do our twining. I want you to do three rows all the way around. Then we're ready to upset our weavers after you have your three rows done. And I've already got this part done. I've got my three rows in here. Come in here and we're going to simply bend these up. And this is upsetting your weavers. Take your four pieces on the corner and clamp them together. Now all these in between also need to be upset. Taking my four corner pieces, I'm going to clamp them together. You should have all your other material soaking now, too. If they break, sometimes they'll sound like they're breaking there. Don't be too alarmed. Unless they break off completely, then they'll need to be replaced. Give them a good bend. Okay, now I've got my half inch flat soaking and that's what I'm using for weavers. I like to go back and look at the base of my basket and weave my first row opposite the base of my basket. We'll start over here. This one's over and this one's under, so that means this one here will be on top. I always start on top. On the outside, on top, I clip it. I kind of cheated and started it under two there. Come to your corner, undo your corner. Go around your corner and put it back on. Again, you'll need to leave that corner on for about four rows before it starts shaping up for you. We want to work this row all the way around. Undoing your corner and putting it back on. And we're going to work this just over and under the basic basket weave pattern. Okay. 
if it rides up on you, just come in here and put a clamp in there. And this is a large basket, so you'll probably end up clamping it a lot with those clothespins. And go back around. When I come back here, if I haven't made a mistake, I will be on the same pattern that I started my row with, which I'm doing. I'm going to weave an overlap four, come in here and cut, and hide this end underneath that one. Nobody's going to see these ends. Okay, go ahead and do another row. I want you to keep weaving. On this one, you can see I've added some color to it. Continue putting your rows up. I've added some blue in here. I've done, uh, with my half inch, I've done four rows and I've added some blue, another row, and I want you to work this base up until it's about six inches. And then come to the sides, like I've done over here, and you'll have your three center spokes here on the sides. I want you to tuck them in. Sometimes they will go tuck in the inside, and others they will tuck on the outside. I know you'll get these little hairs in here. Just come in here and trim those hairs off. But be sure and tuck these, all these three corners in, or these three sides in, because you need the strength there. And then, after you're up your six inches, have tucked in your side for your handle pieces, we're going to start our arrows. And this is called double pairing arrows. You're going to need two strands of your number two round, Here it is, way over here. We're going to be working with two strands and treating it like one. They need to lay side by side. They'll probably tangle on you, so just be expecting it. I'm going to come in here. Now, I want you to have four different lengths here. And the reason being, we don't want to run out at the same time and put a crimp here. I have four different end lengths now, all tangled up. Okay, we're going to start here at our corner, and we're going to load both of these pieces over. And I've got to turn it around so I can see what I'm doing here. And we're going to weave this around. I've started this time, I've started over here on my right, I'm weaving to the left. See what I'm doing here. I'm keeping these one on top of the other, treating it like one piece. I'm going to tangle, so take a minute and untangle them. They're easier to work with that way. Come around here. Put it up here, it'll be easier for you to see. And I'm simply twining. Take a minute and straighten them out because they probably will twist on you. Pull them down flat. Watch the gaps in your basket as you weave your rows. Pull them down flat. When I come up here to the corner, I'm going to take my front one and go around. If you need to crimp this with your pliers, do so. Mine's going to turn with, for me pretty good here. Bring the back one around and then go around your first spoke with that back piece. And again, make sure they lay on top of each other. Now, if you can see this, my arrows are starting to form. Can you see where I have these two coming out here? Starting to form my arrows. This is a real pretty weave. I like to use it on the sides of baskets where it shows nicely. Continue weaving back. Now I'm running out over here. Come in and get another piece. Untangle it. Come up here. Simply pick this piece that ran out with your thumb. Pick it up with your thumb. Insert your new piece. Hold it back here if you have to. Grab its partner here and keep right on twining. Make sure they lay on top of each other. Coming to the end again, and I'm going to take and straighten out my mess here. 
They are all tangled together. Okay, come around here, taking the front one, bring it around. Put a crimp on it if you feel like you need it, if it looks like it's going to break. Take the back one. Let's reverse that. Let's bring the back one around first. If something doesn't look like it's fitting, then take it apart and do it again. Something's wrong. I was taking the wrong one first. Take the back one, or the one that's in front now. Taking this one here, take it around to the front and loop it around the back one. And then we're back on our pattern. Now this one, pull this link through here. Okay, the one on the right, because I'm going this from the right to the left, is going to go around to the back. This one's on my right, it's going around the back. It's the same as twining, we're just reversing it. Now we're starting to see the arrows really well. Can you see the arrows in there? How well, they're kind of going different ways. I want you to continue this weave up until you're about three inches from the top of the basket. Weave back and forth and back and forth. And then when you want, you're coming to the end and we're going to end it, we're going to untangle this. Okay. I'm going to come around here to the end, finish weaving it out, making sure that I'm not twisted anywhere. I'm laying on side by side. Now, I've got a piece that's running out, so let's add a new one here. If this is going to be too close to my edge, had it been any farther, closer to my edge, I would have taken some out and added a piece a little farther back here. Picking up my new piece, I'm going to continue on. Bringing this one around. Then bringing my back piece around, I'm going to just weave this a couple more spots and then I'm going to clip it off. Okay, I'm going to go one more. We need to get away from our edge here. Come in here and clip these four lengths off, take them to the inside and they'll just lay in the inside. Now what we need to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to start tucking all these ends down here. And I'll be, but before we do that, we need to add our number eight round. And this one I've had some pink and I put some blue in too. Kind of made a different pattern going up the side. Lay your number eight round, have it wet so you can work with it, and lay it in here as you tuck these in. Can you see this piece in here? That's for a handle support. Then you're going to come in here with your flathead screwdriver, skip over your number eight, skip over a couple rows of your twining, lift up the rest of the twining and slide that piece down in there. Make sure you're catching that number eight under your rim here, under your, your spokes that you're tucking in. Lift them up and tuck it in. What I've done when I started is I whittled down about an inch and a half, two inches, I whittled on this side. I whittled on the opposite side, the other piece that's coming around ending. That way they'll lay with, next to each other flat and there won't be a, bulge, a bulb, <laughs> a bulk there. Make sure they lay on top. I know this is hard for you to see. I'm going to tuck those in there. One more to tuck. You can go back in later and trim off all these ends that are sticking out. There. See the strength this is going to give it for our handles and that's going to give a strength on the side. Now you need your 5 8 flat oval. You're going to need a couple of long pieces because this is a big basket. We're going to trim this off here about two inches. We're going to flatten this off. Then we're going to come up here 
and we're going to clamp this on. This is the part where these big clamps will come in very handy. You can pick up these big ones just at a local hardware store. I believe you'll find them in the electrical department. Overlap to your whittling. Here's where my whittling is started. So I'm going to overlap and cut that off. And clamp it. Now we have to do the same thing to the inside. So again, oh I have a bad piece on the end here. Let's just cut that off. Come in here and whittle this down for a couple of inches. This was my first overlap, so I'm going to make my second overlap on the other side. That's so I don't get a bulk buildup. And I'm going to put this around here. Because I put some blue in on this one, I've taken some of some blue colored rush and I'm going to add that decorative touch on the top. Now come where I started my whittling and cut this off and it's going to overlap for that two inches. Now I'm going to need my quarter inch and my decorative piece here and this is just colored rush and I'm going to lay it inside I don't really need to work it all the way around. I can work it as I go. I'm going to start my lashing over here at the side so I can be sure and get around the handle to show you. Again, put a point on it. Find the right side. We're going to come up in here. The right side is facing the basket at this point. We're going to come in here. I have a basket. I have a rim, the basket, and a rim. Come up on the inside from the bottom up, circle around, and go between the basket and the rim on the outside. Come up here and we're going to go through our weavers, which happens to be our arrows up here. Open it up, go back to the inside, pull this through. I want you to do that one more time and that locks it in there tight. Make sure you get under your trim piece. And we're going to leave this tail just hanging on the outside of the basket. Then we're going to come up here, lay our trim piece back in. It's not a good idea to get this paper wet, so be real careful. A little bit of water won't hurt it, but we sure don't want to get it soaking wet. I'm going to come up here, straighten out the piece, put a point on this side, cross on the top of our spoke here and go in here between our weavers and pull it through. Now, before you pull it all the way through, bring it around and you can start it in the next spot. If I had a next spot there, but I'm already at the handle. So I'm just going to pull this through. If you do get a twist, work it out. And again, cross on the top of your handle. Pull this really tight. When you come to your rim, where your handle insert is in here, we're going to do a wrap and pull it tight. We don't have any spokes to go between now, so we're just wrapping it around, making sure we're holding it tight. Don't forget you have to work in between here your piece of number eight and your trim piece. I want to make sure I do the same number of wraps and about the same distance between my wraps on the other handle also. Wrap it around. One more. Then I'm going to come up from behind and cross over my top of my spoke again. Line everything up. Work that trim piece in there also. If you have a hard time holding this all together, use some clamps to hold that while you come back here and straighten this piece out. Go in here between your weavers again. Open it up with a screwdriver if you have to. Continue all the way around. 
When you get around to the other side of the basket, you're going to end it the very same way that we started it. Work it all the way around. Then you have your laundry basket, something that's very sturdy basket and I'm sure you'll get a lot of use out of. The basket we'll be working on next week is one of my designs. I call it my pottery basket. It has a base on it. And we'll see you next week when we work on this one. Thanks for being with us.